Hello everyone. I did this small three-dimensional clock in 3JS. It's pretty cool. It follows your mouse. It's animated. The whole project itself is around 150 lines long. It's very small. And I wanted to share with you the way that I did it with the intent, hopefully, to teach you something about this amazing library that is 3JS, which makes it pretty much effortless to build amazing 3D content for the web. So without further ado, let's get right into it. For this project, we're going to use Visual Studio Code and Node.js. We'll first initialize the package by typing npm in it y. Once that's done, we can go ahead and install our dependencies. For this project, we'll install 3.js and Snowpack with this command. Once that's done, let's open up package.json and add this line. Let's now create our entry point file index.html and we can initialize it with an admit abbreviation. It's just an exclamation mark and then you press enter. Let's add some styling and the script. We now have to actually make the script, so let's create a source folder and the script itself. Let's add a console log just to make sure that the old setup works. And once we have that, we're ready to test Snowpack. This is the command that starts the Snowpack server, which will open up a web page and we can see from the console that we are actually logging the message from index.js. Now that we confirm that the old setup works, we can now go ahead and finally start building our 3.js scene. Okay, we can now remove our console log and create our 3.js scene. We're also setting the uh, background of the scene to white. Now we need a camera, and we are placing the camera 10 units away from the center of the screen. Now we need a renderer, which is going to fill the entire screen. We also have to set the proper uh, tone mapping and output encoding for the renderer and append the canvas to the body of the HTML page. Once we have that, we can create a self-invoked uh, function. And inside this function, we're going to call the render loop. Basically, this function is going to be called each time the monitor is ready to render something. Now let's make a render call, which is basically going to render nothing because we don't have any object in our scene. So let's go ahead and add some objects on our scene. But before we do that, I'm only now realizing that I'm missing the imports for these two constants, so let's add them. Okay, now that I've included the, um, the imports, we can create uh, mesh to include in the scene. Uh, we can use any mesh, really. Um, I'll go and use a sphere mesh for this example. Every mesh needs a geometry and a material. You can read online the meaning of each of these arguments, but um, in short, this is the radius of the sphere. These values are going to be used to determine how many triangles we're going to use to actually make the geometry. 5 is probably a little bit of a low number, so let's bump that up to 10. And once that's done, we can add the sphere to the scene. I've also realized that the function is not actually being invoked, so let's fix that. And if all went well, you should be able to see a sphere on your FreeJS scene. At the moment, the material that we're using is very basic, and we can definitely do better than that by using an environment map. So let's go ahead and do that. We first need a generator to process the environment map. We also have to move the mesh declaration inside the init function. And now we have to actually go and grab an environment map. For that, you have two options. You either go on my repo and click download on the environment map assets. And by the way, I'll put this link in the description of the video. Or you can go to polyavin and the HDRI section and select any of the environment map that they have. They are beautiful, so I also encourage you to check them out. Whichever option you choose, once you actually have an environment map, we have to make an assets folder and include the environment map inside of the assets folder. Once we have the environment map, we can start to load it inside 3.js. 
we need an RGBE loader. This is the input statement for the loader. Then we need to make our invoke function asynchronous. And finally, process the environment map with the PM RAM generator that we just defined above. Finally, we can change the material of the sphere mesh um, as a mesh standard material and include the environment map. We can also include properties for the roughness and metalness of the material. And this is how the sphere will look like after we apply the environment map. Now, it would be amazing if we, if we could rotate the scene a little bit to see the, um, the reflections that we're using. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's import orbit controls. Now let's initialize the controls. And let's actually use them in our animation loop. To do that, we need to add this statement before we actually render the scene. And now we should be able to move the scene around and see um, all the reflections in the sphere. I think that we covered a lot of ground in this video. We now have a scene, we can move it around, we have a mesh and an environment map. So I'll leave it at that and in the next video we are going to build the rings of the clock and hopefully make them uh, make them react to the mouse movement. So see you there.